Now, from Washington, D.C., Raymond Arroyo. A warm welcome to all of you joining us in the United States and the world over. Earlier this month, one of the most heroic men I've ever interviewed, Vietnamese Cardinal Francis Xavier Van Thuan, moved a step closer to sainthood. The Vatican recently named him a servant of God. Back in 1998, I sat down with Cardinal Van Thuan. He told me about his amazing 13-year imprisonment by the communist regime in Vietnam and how his faith helped him persevere. Tonight, We'll bring you an encore of that interview that you won't want to miss. It is unbelievable. He was imprisoned for 13 years by communist authorities as a coadjutor archbishop of Saigon in 1975. With only his faith, he overcame insurmountable odds. He's also on the road to becoming a canonized saint. In 1998, I sat down with him while he was serving as president of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace in Rome. Now that his cause is underway, we thought it Time to revisit this inspiring interview. Here's my conversation with the late Cardinal Francis Xavier Van Thuan. In 1975, you are yeah. named Archbishop Coadjutor of Saigon. Yeah. Now, this is just before the communists come in. Tell us what happened to you shortly thereafter. Mm. I was appointed. Archbishop Coadjuta of Saigon, exactly one week before Saigon collapsed, liberated. Yeah. And uh, it is a very delicate situation. When the communists come, they told me, your appointment by the Pope, one week before we came, means a conspiracy between the Vatican and the imperialism to put in Saigon the largest diocese of Vietnam and exactly the capital of South Vietnam so that you can organize later the struggles against the communist system. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they asked me to go back to my f first diocese. But I can do. I have already a successor. And I must uh, stay where the Pope asked me to stay. So three months later, I was arrested. You were summoned to the presidential palace, correct? Yeah. Uh, I was invited to the presidential palace, whose name is uh, uh, the Palace of Independence. And on the 15th of August, the Feast of Assumption of Our Lady. So I think it is a good sign for me because I was arrested on the day of Assumption. And you served the church in prison for 13 years. Yeah. Can you tell me what that was like? Did you expect to be there that long? I didn't expect to, to be so long. Yeah. And you know, the prison is not a villa, summer villa, no. <laughs> huh? But. Uh, the first thing happened to me is that immediately after I was arrested, I was anxious. How may I be in contact with my people? Because I was brought away from my diocese 450 kilometers. So we have no plane and, and uh, cars uh, and uh, easy uh, communication like here. How may I be in contact with my people? May, how may I serve my people when the pastor is outside? Yeah. Then one night when I was uh, 
thinking about, I realized that why I am so stupid. I must know like St. Paul. When he was in prison, he wrote letters to his people. Immediately, the next day, when from my uh, obligatory residence, I saw the little boys go into mass. It is still dark at 4 o'clock. I call a boy of a servant, and I told him, you go and tell your mother to buy for me the old block of calendar, calendar of last year. Yeah. And in the evening, the little boy, when it was dark, brought to me some blocks of calendar. I begin to write my letters to my people. Yeah, it is my message from captivity. And I, I wrote it during the night. You can imagine how it is uh, uh, hot. And I have so many mosquitoes around me. But I accept and I wrote on the back of the shed. And the next morning, the little boy go to mass, and he, he passed by. I sent him. Please, brought it to your family, and tell your brothers and sisters, copy that. Mm. If I keep it with me, the police come, will confiscate that. And I try to finish in one month and a half. And a complete message to my people. Then I finished that on the day of 8th of December, Immaculate Conception. You are still in prison during this whole time. Mm -hmm. And for nine years, you're placed in solitary confinement. How did you deal with the silence of solitary confinement? Yeah. My first principle is to live the present moment and fill it with love. How did I fill it with love? I wrote to my people. Then I was sent to, to prison, to isolatory confinement, and put in a, in a boat with 1,500 other prisoners and sent to North Vietnam, up to the mountains. And, uh, I always continue to live the present moment. And I ask myself, when I was put there, I saw 1,500 older prisoners, most of them no Catholics. And I said, the boat now become my cathedral. Hmm. Yeah. On, the, on the ice, human ice, it is a boat of prisoner. But according to the faith for a pastor in such situation, the boat with prisoners, the boat is my most beautiful cathedral. Now I live here, the moment present, with present of God. Yeah. And these people, no Catholic people, are the people of God. And this, he sent them to me. I have to love them, to comfort them, because they are very sad, huh? very anxious. They told me, now we are going far away from your home, from our home. We go to the north. How can we have contact with our family? We will die there. I comfort them. Then I go again in isolatory co confinement. That must yeah? have been very hard after yeah. pastoring to the yeah. people there. People don't beat me, no. But it is silent. I have not a visit from my family. All the prisoners have a visit every month. I have no. Yeah? And uh, there, is, there are always two policemen 
with me. And uh, so, for me, it is a more a mental torture because it is a vacuum. I have nothing to do. I prefer to go and work on the rice field because I have friends there. But here, I can talk to anybody. So it's nine years of a dark night of the soul, really, yeah. for you. Yeah. And, and what uh, did you learn? in that silence and in that darkness? So, first I learned that I am very weak. Physically weak and mentally weak. I can do nothing. God did everything for me, through me. With God, I can do everything. But alone, I can do nothing. Yeah. Tell me about the captors. You're the, 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 the policemen who were there guarding you, something happens as a result of your contact with them? I, first, they don't, they don't speak to me. They said, yes, no, they are gentle, polite, but they avoid to speak to me because they have the order of their boss. No communication. If they communicate with me, maybe I I contaminate them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the boss told them, because after what they told me, huh. the boss told them, we send you every two weeks, another equip of five. But Afterwards, the, bo the boss controlled and told them, I will not change you. Because if I change you, this bishop will condem contaminate all the police. So they, they have been with me seven years. <laughs> seven years. And I try to do something for them. I have nothing to give them, to show my friendship. No, I'm too poor. But one night, a thought came to me. You are still rich. You are rich with the love of Jesus in your heart. You can do something. What did you do? I love them. And they become my friends. Yeah. And they become my, my student, my alumni. I teach them. Yeah. So uh, there is silence. There is no communication with outside. But at least we become friends. And I teach them. Yeah. And eventually they convert? No. No. Okay. The, I, I, I never mm. see or think about the problem of conversion. I, I give it to God. Yeah? The Holy Spirit is working in their heart. Yeah? I only must be testimony of the love of God. Mm. Yeah? And uh, mm, I can tell you how um, how is this love? One day I must cut the wood, and uh, I told one policeman, "I would like to ask a fa favor. May I help you? I would like." to cut a piece of wood in the form of a cross. So, this is too dangerous. Yeah? Mm. You don't know and the regulation of the camp, of the prison. It is forbidden to have any sign of religion. And you, you would like to, to have a cross? No. 
you are my friend now. Mm. Let me do. No, the boss will control. They will confiscate the cross, and you will be punished. And it is very dangerous for us also. Mm. I will, I will hide it. How can you hide it? So close your eyes. Let me do. He went away. Leave me alone. I got a, a piece of wood in the form of cross and hide it in a piece of soap until I was liberated. And outside the prison, I cover this piece of wood with metal and it becomes my pectoral cross for bishop. Yeah. And that's it there. Yeah. And the chain is interesting as well. And the chain is interesting also because in another prison around Hanoi, one day I asked a policeman, may I ask you to cut for me a piece of electric wire? After three days, he came back. He said, tonight I came to grab you during the night with another companion. So I will bring you a piece of electric wire <laughs> to spins us. And we will realize your chain from 7 to 11. And in four hours, we cut the electric wire in pieces like matches. We measure the matches, mm -hmm. and we make the chain and you see, it is the chain of from electric, electric wire. wire. Yeah, amazing. Worked in four hours, <laughs> but the main problem for me, it is not a souvenir of prison only. It is good souvenir, but it recall me that only with love of Jesus Christ we can change the heart of the people. In your book, you say, and I'll read this quote to you, you said, if our Lord were to permit me to choose again, I would not choose any other path but this. Yeah. Why? How can you say that after 13 years in prison? Yeah. I am not choosing the suffering. I choose the will of God, you see. It is different. And when I choose the will of God, there is the love of God with me, you the presence of Jesus with me. So I am sure that he accompany me. I follow him in various roads. Yeah, Sometimes it is very hard, but always there is hope. How did you celebrate Mass? And how important was the Eucharist to you while in prison? I celebrate Mass nearly always. Yeah. Because when we, we were arrested, we must go immediately empty hands. Maybe in the next day, you are allowed to write few words, to ask clauses, to pass, and so on. I, I wrote the first line, please send me a little bit wine medicines against my stomach disease. So the faithful outside understand. They have the gift of the Holy Spirit to understand very quickly. <laughs> and uh, the chief of the prison called me, Mr. Van Thuan, do you have a stomach disease? Yes, sir. You need medicine? Yes, sir. Uh, I need medicine, and I, I take medicine every morning. Here for you, a little bottle. Yes, with the etiquette, medicine against stomach disease. <laughs> yeah, for you. It is a great joy for me, great joy. And uh, I keep that with me, and there is another me medicine also, this the host. 
lacerated in very, very little pieces, but put in a mortar against humidity, so I can keep it very long. Huh. And it is too precious for me, and uh, I celebrate in my hands. My hands become a chalice. I mm -hmm. said, with three drops of water, one uh, of wine, and one drop of water, I celebrate Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and when I was uh, in concentration camp with all the friends, we arranged that six Catholics are together. Mm -hmm. And because we slept in a common bed, 50%, 25, 25, head against head, yeah. And so, in the evening, when it is dark, I celebrate by memory the holy sacrifice. Then I distribute the Holy Communion to my companion. And afterwards, we collect the paper from the box of cigarettes. And we make a little bag to put inside Jesus Hook Eucharist. Mm -hmm. Every Friday there is a session of indoctrination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so all people, all prisoners are going there. 250, and we wait until the break. There is a break. Who has tobacco, cigarettes, can smoke. And my companions brought the bag, little bag, with Jesus to all the group. Mm. Each group, 50 person. And the Catholics in all the groups have always one of them with Jesus in his pocket. Hmm. And when they go to the rice field, they know that walking, they have Jesus among them. How did you finally get out of prison? Tell us that briefly. The first, 21st of no, November is the day of presentation. I'm cooking my lunch. I had a phone for my guards. Hmm. I said, maybe, maybe it is for me. Exactly five minutes later, he came. Mr. Antoine, have you lunch? Not yet. So, have your lunch quietly, and then dress well, go to see the boss. Who is he? We don't know, but good luck, good luck. I went, I met the minister of police. <laughs> we are talking a little while. Then he asked me, do you have some desire? You can explain your desire. <laughs> liberty, liberty. When? Today. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure today is the feast of Our Lady. He told his secretary, please do the formality according to his design. Some of the footage you saw in that interview came from a documentary, Road of Hope, The Spiritual Journey of Cardinal Van Thuan. It's available from the EWTN Religious Catalog. He's an inspiration.